Today is the fourth Sunday in Advent, the day on which we celebrate the gift of love. The four candles on the Advent candles, and there's no fixed rule about what they should be, but one of the traditions is that the first would be hope, the second one faith, the third joy, and the fourth peace, and sometimes it's hope, peace, joy, and love. But we cover all of these things, peace and love and joy and hope, as we journey through this time of Advent and look forward to the birth of Jesus. Our opening prayer. O God of Elizabeth and Mary, you visited your servants with news of the world's redemption in the coming of the Saviour. Make our hearts leap with joy and fill our mouths with songs of praise, that we may announce glad tidings of peace and welcome the Christ in our midst. Amen. We listen to Luke chapter 1, verse 46 to 55, Mary's Magnificat. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. There is so much to think about in what Mary says, but the first verses are quite important. Verse 46, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. I just think that's a beautiful description of the soul's attitude of worship towards God, towards God, the creator of heaven and earth, towards God revealed to us in the person of Jesus. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Wouldn't it be good to be more like Mary in our spiritual relationship with God, to have a soul that constantly glorifies the Lord and a spirit, an inner being that lives in joy in God my Saviour. So often we find our joy in things other than God our Saviour. We're looking for all sorts of things to satisfy us and to give our spirit joy. But Mary knows that her spirit finds its joy in God her Saviour. And the reason for that is verse 48. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. Mindful is such a lovely word, a word that reminds us that God pays deep attention to us, that God never forgets us, doesn't stop listening for our troubles and our needs. God listens to his people, listens for his people and listens to your heart. Because God listens to your heart, you can be like Mary and glorify the Lord in your soul. And your spirit can rejoice in God your Saviour. As we carry on reading from Luke chapter 1, read in verse 50, these verses that say, His mercy extends to those who fear Him from generation to generation. And instead of talking about what God will do, as Mary expects Jesus to be born, she speaks in what someone calls the, what uh, grammar people call the gnomic eris tense which says that he has and he is and he he will be kind of doing. And so in the uh, English it says he has performed, but the implication is that God has done it, is doing it and will continue to do it forever. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm, scattered those who are proud in their inmost thought, brought down rulers from their thrones, lifted up the humble, filled the hungry with good things, sent the rich away empty, and has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful. God has already done many of the things that you just wait for God to do. So I pray that your soul, like Mary's soul, would glorify the Lord, and your spirit would rejoice 
in God your Savior, even at this difficult time. I invite us to take a moment to pray. Brothers and sisters, as we joyfully await the glorious coming of the Christ, let us pray for the needs of the Church, our community, and the world. Lord God, we pray for your Church. We ask that you would help us as we are not able to meet together in person, to know the presence of your Holy Spirit with us, wherever we are. We pray for our community as we become aware of so many more people going through this fourth wave of COVID infections. We thank you, Lord, that so far our hospitals are not overwhelmed and that we seem to be coping with the pandemic as it is right now. But, Lord, so many people are struggling. We ask for your blessing, your peace and your strength for each of them. And Lord, we pray for the world in which we live. Lord, help us to realise your coming and your peace. God of promise, you have given us a sign of your love through the gift of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who was promised from ages past. We believe, as Joseph did, the message of your presence, whispered by an angel, and offer our prayers for your world, confident of your care and mercy for all creation. Amen. Thank you for listening to this short devotion from my house with the noise of dogs, one fly, plenty of birds and lots of cars making a noise all around me. And I pray for you today that the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit would be with you all. Amen.